In this video, we're going to take a big leap forward and we're going to have a look at how to create a sun study or a shadow diagram. Um, one thing that we too commonly do is we don't actually test our shadow diagrams or our, our sites shadow casting until it's far too late. Once we've already designed and documented the drawing, maybe it's the last thing we do before we get drawings ready for council. By then it's really too late. Uh, we've already designed it and you won't really want to change the design to ensure that you're not casting shadows on other people. So what you'd be better off doing is doing a shadow diagram or a sun study a lot earlier and that will ensure that it's doing what it should, you're not casting shadows on other people's sites. Now the site that I've got is a corner site and we've got a road to the south. So really the only person we're ever going to be casting a shadow on because we're in Australia and the sun travels from our east into the north and then into the west. So we're not going to be casting a shadow on the person who's to our north. We will be casting a shadow on the person that is to our west for 115 but only in the morning and not really a lot of the side anyway. So we're really not going to be casting a lot of shadows from this site, but so that we can understand this as a diagram, we're just going to do it anyway. And we're going to see that the majority of the shadow will start here and then it will be sweeping around and over here. Now, before we can start our shadow diagrams or our sun studies, first we need to get our site set up. So therefore, the first thing we need to do is understand which direction is north. Now, based on this, our north arrow is let's switch views, is mostly up the page. We see it's 89.26. And if I want to change that, if I want to make sure that my project is reflecting that, then I can find that under my options, project preferences. Sorry. Let's turn that off and close that down. Options. Project Preferences, Set North Point. We're going to click and click. So we're graphically defining where north is. And then the next thing we need to do is define where our project is at. So our site is in Blacktown, New South Wales, Australia. If I go into my, again, project preferences, project location, then I can type in a location. I can use latitude and longitude, um, or for now, all we're going to do is just choose the time zone. And we see that this is Australian Eastern Standard Time, and that's going to be fine for now. I could also go cities and choose Sydney, and that again will make that quite reliable, dependable. We could change that if we wanted to, um, to make it more precise, but for now it's, it's not going to make that much of a difference. We could also put in an altitude. For this one we saw that our site's roughly 55 or 52 meters above sea level, so that's fine as well. Um, there is an option to use Google Maps or Google Earth to choose that. I've found that it hasn't worked very well for me in this version of ArchiCAD. I'm not sure if it's um, an ArchiCAD version problem or a build problem or it's just my problem but anyway that's the slower but maybe slightly more dependable way of working it out. What do we need to do next? We need to decide whether we're going to create a shadow diagram or a sun study. I'm going to do a sun study first because it's a little bit more graphic and it might help us to understand what we're trying to do. So in order to do that we're going to go into document, creative imaging, and then these are the options of what we want to create. So we could create a, a single render or we could create a sun study. We need to get some of the settings right before we do this. So we're going to use either a 3D window or a project, sorry, our photo rendering window. The photo rendering window would give us a nicer looking animation but it would be much slower. So we want to use the 3D window. When do we want to set it for? We could set it for any day of the year that we wanted. Generally, however, we'll normally set it for the shortest day of the year, which would be June 21st or 22nd. Um, we could set it from any time, or we could set it from sunrise to sunset. The way that council generally wants it, most councils would want one at 9 a.m., one at noon, and one at 3 p.m. So we could do it 
from those times if we wanted to. And note this is in 24 hour time. So 9 through till 15. And I'll make this interval quite small. I'll make it five minutes just so it, it lasts a bit longer and looks a bit nicer. Uh, everything else about this is fine. We don't need to change too much more, but what we do need to do is make sure we go into the 3D window settings and make sure that our 3D window is going to be um, casting a shadow. Save. And I'll just cancel this for now. So when we go into our 3D view options, 3D projection settings, this is all changed. This is where we used to go and make some of these changes. We don't have these anymore. It's now under my view 3D view options, 3D styles. So it's changed in the last version of ARCHICAD. Now I can use any of these options um, and I can go in and change them if I want to. OpenGL gives us the nicest look and it will make it a bit faster to render I think than the vectorial engine. Um, I don't want to change it at the moment, I want to mostly leave it as it is. I don't want to choose monochromatic, that's going to make it harder to understand what we're trying to do. I do want sun shadows to be on, I do want contours to be on. So we're going to go back into our 3D window and we can see that it's already casting a shadow. So we're happy with those settings. Now let's just play with those very briefly. If we go back into our settings, we could choose some of the preset options. So white model with shadows. So again, this is white and it's casting a shadow. The advantage of white is it's just a bit cleaner. Um, so we may therefore like it for that reason. We don't have a lot of information on our site. We know that there is a road, but we can't actually see it. So we could go into our model and represent it. Um, but because our site is sloping or our, our model is sloping, it might not represent very well anyway. So we're not going to worry too much about that at the moment. Let's just go back into that 3D window. Let's just choose this one. Detail shading with shadows. Doesn't really matter which orientation we'll choose, but we'll choose something like this uh, just so we can see our full mesh. Now the probability is that we might be off the edges of our mesh to begin with, but that's fine. And I'm going to leave the fence on. Um, a lot of times that's not necessarily what council's wanting. They're just wanting to know the shadow of the building. But it's interesting to think about that our fence casts a shadow, and sometimes it casts a shadow as big as the building depending on our setbacks. So I think it's very valuable to show the fence there, particularly if we're doing an existing and a proposed um, shadow diagram because it's showing that if we've got a tall fence then our building may not actually be casting much more of a shadow than the fence itself. Alright, let's give that a try. Creative imaging, create sun study like we had it before. I'm not going to go show because then it won't save. I'm going to instead press save and just choose desktop YouTube videos and we'll call this Sun study. It's not going to be this slow when the video is finished, this is just its processing. Let's open that up and have a look. The great thing about the video playback is it actually gives us a timeline as well. So in terms of a, a very simple design exercise, and of course this can change as we update, and it very nicely stayed on the edge for me. Of course I could move this across manually, and we see that we have managed to stay within our mesh, which is really nice. Of course this is just based on that slab that I made before and that's why I used a slab, not just a 2D element but a 3D element so it could create that massing. So we can see a very simple sun study and what our shadow diagram is doing. So then of course um, we could increase the size of that model. 
Let's just add another block on top of that, perhaps. And we could do another sun study to see what difference that makes. Again, I'm just being very whimsical. I'm not really planning it out very well, but um, you're getting the idea of what I'm talking about. So let's call this one two. So very, very simply, again, why am I doing this? I'm showing it as a design tool. So we don't want to start designing our building without having the the research without having the site data, what we're doing therefore is we're producing site data, we're producing research, we're understanding the implications of the potential design on its site and its surroundings. In this case we're working out how much shadow we'll be casting on neighbouring sites or adjacent buildings and we're showing because it's a corner site it's really not casting any. Now this is a very unofficial way of creating this. Um, in later videos I'll show you how to do this with a shadow diagram but for now um, a sun study is a, maybe a little bit more informative and a little bit more graphic for what we're trying to understand.